Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. I had to do this video like three times because I kept <laughs> getting this brother's name mixed up with another brother because, you know, you know, they have the same first name, but they got different uh, last names, even though both their last names starts with R. But I want to make very clear the person I'm talking about is Glenn Rice, not Glenn Robinson. But, you know, you have NBA players that unfortunately they get lost in the sauce. You know, um, you have these guys that have the misfortune of playing in an era where you have the standout guys, the superstars or the really, really good players. And then you have the good players, the solid players, uh, who make a, a, a impact in a quiet way. And due to the fact that they don't make much noise, you know, as a person, because at the end, end of the day, the NBA likes rah, rah, rah guys. Don't be fooled by that. They like guys like Allen Iverson. They like Allen Iversons. They like those type of dudes. Like I said, the NBA, the reason why they didn't want to build the league around a guy like Tim Duncan, which they should have, but Tim Duncan was just incredibly just nonchalant. I swear they would be times you would have to like tap, you know, Tim Duncan like on the shoulder to make sure he was even breathing. I mean, he never showed any emotion about anything. But then again, he was so damn good. <laughs> Why should he? He was just one of them dudes. He led his play you know, talk on the basketball court. But I do think if Tim Duncan was one of those rah, rah, rah type of guys, I think his name would be mentioned more in in the top five, top ten list as all-time great. Because to me, I think Tim Duncan is, he's in my top ten, probably my top five. I never saw a dude that played like Tim Duncan. He was the epitome of the quiet assassin. But anyway, excuse me, I digress a little bit. But let me get back to Glenn Rice. Like I said before, Glenn Rice had the misfortune of playing from, you know, deep into the Jordan era. And then the tail end of his career, the Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant you know, Vince Carter, that era. He played from, I think, 89 to 2004. He played like 15 NBA seasons, you know. So when you play in an era with all those dudes, all the names that I mentioned they're all Hall of Famers. All of them. You know, and I didn't even, even mention the other people, you know, Kev, Kevin Garnett, those type of dudes, Paul Pierce. So it was bad for this dude. But at the end of the day, he still managed to have a very solid NBA career. And he won an NBA championship. And he contributed to that championship. He made shots. And Glenn Rice was a very good shooter, man. Real good mid-range shooter. He could shoot, he could shoot the three, but he was a real good mid-range shooter. Real solid dude, man. You know, I know there was a little bit of a controversy when he was traded to the Lakers. I I, I think it was over money. I can't remember exactly what it was. But um it was something about that trade to the Lakers, you know. If I'm not mistaken, I think he got traded for uh, Eddie Jones. And Eddie Jones, that's another guy um, I'm going to do a video about pretty soon. About whether he's a Hall of Famer or should he get some consideration. But let's get back to Glenn Rice. I looked up his numbers, man. His numbers are solid. And I'm going to compare his numbers to two guys that are currently in the Hall of Fame and that went in on the first ballot. 
like I said before, Glenn Rice contribute to that Lakers championship in the two th- in the 1999-2000 season, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong, correct me, but I think it was the 1999. I'm freestyling this stuff. I'm not looking at no stats. I could have looked up the stats, but I think it was 99-2000. So, you know, he helped him win the championship. Then, um, I think he went on to Houston or something, and then I think he finished his career with the Knicks. But he quietly exited out the NBA. He made a quick exit out. Pretty much never heard from him again. You know, didn't really have any ties to the NBA after he uh, retired. He drifted off into the night quietly, just as his career. But he was a NBA All-Star, three-time NBA All-Star MVP. You know. Now. Here's the thing. Okay. I told you this guy's name is going to always come to mind when you think of guys who got into the Hall of Fame on the first ballot and it has a big question mark. And I listened to the video that, you know, uh, Two Raw made where he basically said, well, yeah, the, the, the year he went in, it was a weak class. So he got in by default. He was like the biggest name. And that could be true. But then I think of other people. You know, I think of other people. I could think of some second ballot people that you might have made an argument that they shouldn't have got in there on the first or the second. Okay. Now, I always got to mention Tracy McGrady because like I said, Tracy McGrady has the biggest question mark. And another dude... And I'm going to be honest, I know it's people that's going to be mad. If you are hypersensitive, please don't respond in a disrespectful manner. I'm just making a point. Just listen. Don't be disrespectful. But I can make an argument that Steve Nash wasn't the first ballot Hall of Famer. Okay? Because here's the question. What is a Hall of Famer? What are we looking for? What are we critiquing? When we evaluate whether a guy deserves a trip to the Hall of Fame on the first ballot, the second ballot, or just period. I looked at Tracy McGrady's numbers. 18,381 points. 17 years in the NBA. Um... 938 career games played. Okay. Didn't win nothing. Never could get out of the first round of the playoffs. Didn't win nothing. Won a a few scoring titles. But at the time, he was, you know, he was one of the NBA's biggest stars because he had a real good, like, five-year run where he just went on a tear. You know, he just went on the tear. He put up some solid numbers. But based off his career that he he just never could get out of the first round of the playoffs. And then, you know, he was putting the Hall of Fame on the first ballot and make you ask the question, well, if he got in, why didn't Chris Bosh get in? Chris Bosh is a two-time NBA champion. Okay? So I don't understand that. And and, and I know people are going to say, well, you know, um, just like Kobe Bryant and, and, and Kevin, Kevin Garnett and, and Tim Duncan getting in, this is just a special class. Well, Chris Bosh would have made it even more special. Do you know if they had put Chris Bosh in there along with, they would have had, Four guys with a total of um, 13 NBA championships combined, and the voters, they got it wrong. They got it wrong. And I'm really upset that Chris Bosh didn't get in. The NBA had a chance to do something special, and they blew it. I'm just sorry. I just get mad about that every time I think about that because I I, I thought 
Chris Bosch got a raw deal. And I don't want to hear about, well, there were people that thought he was, man, that don't have nothing to do with what he accomplished. Save it. You can save that shit. So, then you have another dude who's in the Hall of Fame on the first ballot. And that's one Steve Nash. And don't get touchy about Steve Nash. Because I think at the, the end of the day, you could make an argument that the NBA was sort of trying to be political at the time. That they was trying to do what you would call some quote-unquote reverse affirmative action. If you catch my drift with Steve Nash. Because when, when Steve Nash won that first MVP, even though he won back-to-backs, you could have made a strong argument that Shaquille O'Neal should have got that MVP. Okay. Then the next year that he won, I thought Kobe Bryant was robbed. Flat out. I thought it should have went to Kobe Bryant. Okay. I really did. I thought it should have went to Kobe Bryant. But I, I, I got it. And then I also could make an argument that his teammate, Amadi Stoudemire at the time, who was having a monster year, he should have got some MVP consideration. So, you know, I'm just keeping it. I'm, I'm just keeping it 100. I'm just keeping it 100. That's just real talk. And I was like, okay, Steve Nash didn't win nothing. Tracy McGrady didn't win nothing. But both of those dudes got into the Hall of Fame on the first ballot. And unfortunately, like I said, for Glenn Rice, he's just one of them dudes that's lost in the shuffle. Do I think he should be in there by now? My honest opinion from Town Biz Sports and Media Absolutely. I think by now he should be in there. I mean, they don't even mention the guy's damn name. That's what's so sad about it. his name never comes up. And I, I had like an epiphany and I said, you know what? Glenn Rice was a really damn good basketball player. But that's unfortunate how sports go. You just have those dudes that people just forget about. And like I said, he just was a dude that quietly came into the league and quietly left. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, Too Raw will make a video to this because this is his expertise too. I don't know if he's already done this video, but I would like to see what Too Raw thinks about this. But me, myself, I think Glenn Rice should be in the Hall of Fame. Yes, Glenn Rice is a Hall of Famer. I hope I didn't say Robinson, but, you know, it is what it is, though. This is your boy, Town Biz. I'm out. Glenn Rice should be in the Hall of Fame.